looked at the surface area of some interesting right prism so far. Today, there is another shape that I want to show you. It is a shape that we see often in the world around us. It is the cylinder. In this lesson, you are going to need a can, a ruler and a pen. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Calculate the surface area of the cylinder. What do you think the net of this object will look like? Yes, the difficult part is to think what the rounded part should actually look like. Let's look at a clever way to work out how to make the net of the cylinder. I cut off the top and the bottom of the cylinder and I get two circles. Now using my pair of scissors I cut the cylinder and do you see what the shape of the rounded part is? Let me show you again using an animation. Let's draw an accurate diagram of this net on a piece of paper. The height of the cylinder is the height of the rectangle and it's easy to measure the height of the rectangle. But the question is, how do we measure the base of the rectangle? Let me show you something really clever. Remember, a quick way to measure something that is round if you do not have measuring tape is to mark off a point on a flat surface like this. Then put a mark on the can or the object that you are trying to measure. Now place this mark on the point where you've just marked. Using a ruler as a guide, roll the object along the side until we have the mark that we've made touching the surface again. And mark this point off as well. Now, all that's left for us to do is measure from this point to this point. Let's see if we can work out the formula for calculating the surface area for the cylinder. I have another diagram here that we can work with. We know that the area formula for the circle is given by A equal to pi times radius squared. Now because we have two circles in this diagram, we need to multiply this formula by 2. This simplifies to 2 pi times radius squared. This is the formula for both the circle parts in this diagram. Now we still need to calculate the formula for the rectangular part of the cylinder. Do you remember what the formula for the area of the rectangle is? Yes, its area is equal to base times perpendicular height. So to find the area, we will need to know the base and the height of the rectangle. Look carefully at base AB. Can you find this length somehow? Let me give you a hint. I'm going to show you the animation of making the net again. Look carefully at how the bases are attached to the circle. <laughs> Did you see that the bases fit perfectly around the circles? So base AB is actually the same as the circumference of the circle. Do you remember what the formula for the circumference of the circle is? The circumference of the circle is given by the formula 2 pi r. So let's write the area for the rectangle. We know that the area is given by base times 
the perpendicular height. Now we just found the base to be the same as the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r and h is the height of the rectangle. So we get the area of the rectangle to be 2 pi r h. Now we can work out the total surface area for our cylinder. All we need to do is add the area for our two circles to the area of our rectangle. So the total surface area is calculated by area equals to the area of the two circles which is 2 times pi times radius squared plus the area of the rectangle which is 2 pi times radius times the height. Using this, we could work out the amount of metal that is used to make a can. Why don't you grab your can and do it with me? Remember that your measurements might be different to mine depending on the size of the can that you have, but the method will still be the same. We need to get the exact measurements of the can and then substitute these values into the formula we've just worked out. The formula we found for the cylinder is 2 times pi times radius squared plus 2 times pi times radius times the height. We already know that pi rounded off is 3,14. So all we need to do is find the radius of the circle and the height of the cylinder. Using a ruler, I'm going to measure from one side of the can to the other side, passing through the center. And on my can, I get... 10 centimeters. The radius is half of the diameter, which means if we want to find the radius, we need to divide the diameter by 2. So with this can, the radius is therefore 5 centimeters. Now, using my ruler, let's measure the height. On my can, I get 12 centimeters. Right, now we have all the information we need to substitute into the formula we can find the total surface area. We know that the radius is equal to 5 centimeters and the height is equal to 12 centimeters. Substituting these points in, we get area is equal to 2 times the value of pi, which is 3,14, multiplied by radius, which is 5 squared, plus 2 times pi, which is 3,14, multiplied by the radius which is 5 multiplied by the height which is 12. So our total surface area is 533,8 centimeters squared. Now I have a task for you. Compare the dimensions of your can and its surface area with three classmates. Then write a short report using diagrams explaining how and why your answers differ. Before we say goodbye, let's summarize what we've learned about calculating the surface area of objects in this series of lessons. We found the formula for the surface area of a rectangle. And we discovered that shapes made from the same parts have the same areas. Using this knowledge, we found that the formula for the surface area of a parallelogram, a triangle, a trapezium, and a kite. We then discovered that in order to find the surface area of more complex shapes, we needed to have at least three views of that shape. With the help of these different views, we've managed to find the formulae for the surface areas of right prisms using nets. <laughs> I hope that you've had as much fun as I've had arriving at these conclusions. Now you need to go and practice using these formulae. Goodbye and good luck.